Ceramics are some of the most complicated, most involved works of art. There are the clays, the glazes, the different decorative types. Then there are the kilns and the firing temperatures. I found all of that really interesting to study and to unravel and figure out. The works in this sale come from the Lin Yu Shanran collection, one of the world's finest and most comprehensive collections of Song Dynasty ceramics. Song ceramics refer to ceramics produced during China's Song Dynasty, which runs from the 10th century to the 13th century. The works have very straightforward shapes, and they're characterized by light-colored, subtly-hued glazes. Each kiln during the Song Dynasty generally was best known for one type of ware. This is a conical bowl from the Ding kilns. The Ding kilns mainly produced white wares. These are the rarest of the rare in Chinese ceramics because of its black glaze. It has a porcelain body, a white body, which you can see on the underside. It was fired resting on its foot ring in the kiln, so the foot ring had to be left unglazed. The potter held it this way, dipping it into the glaze mixture, swirled it around. The position of the fingers left those indentations. With the dark glazes, the decoration is usually abstract. The very finest ones have the partridge feather models, which are simply brown flecks, evenly and harmoniously on the surface of the glaze. It's just a very rare and very wonderful piece. The Yaozhou kilns are best known for their celadon wares. In Song Dynasty ceramics, the principal decorative motifs are floral. Often we see a lotus, or we might see a peony, or in the case of the celadon piece, hibiscus. Once the piece has been shaped, the potter will incise or carve the decoration, let it dry, and then coat it with the glaze, and once that's dried, it's ready for firing. The Sijo pieces are more complex. They use gray stoneware, but in order to make it resemble porcelain, they covered it all over with white slip to look like imperial dingware. Slip is a clay that's been ground to a fine powder and mixed with water. Once they've coated with white slip, how do you decorate it? Their first inclination was to carve as they had in the celadon pieces. They incised the outlines of the floral decoration, then they took a scalpel and shaved away the slip. As the Jawer progresses, they move from this very laborious technique to painting. So this has a full coating of white slip, but instead of carving all of the decoration as on the bowl, they have used a brush, which they dipped into black slip, and then painted on the surface. Just below the neck, they coated a circle with black slip, and then incised chrysanthemum petals, in the same way that for the fish, they incised through the black slip in a crosshatch pattern, they were storage vessels for wine, for soy sauce, for vinegar. I think it's the simplicity, the straightforwardness, and in many cases, the subtlety of the wares, which gives them a very contemporary feel. They may look simple, but there's a very complicated technique behind all of it. These are the ultimate achievement in those techniques, and they still serve as inspiration for potters today.